6,055 pounds empty weight as we see it here. One owner and in dynamite condition. My name is Josh the RV Nerd. This is a uh, super slide rear kitchen Shasta that does something most rear kitchens do very poorly. It gives us access to the refrigerator in transit and that's pretty cool. And this is what I was talking about. We're actually going to begin with the slide closed on this one because I think it's one of its best qualities. Without touching the slide out, unlike most super slide rear kitchens, I can get back to the sink. I can get to the refrigerator. I can't get to the giant pantry behind the slide, but I can get to enough storage where as long as I plan ahead for this, I can still navigate the RV very, very easily for travel stops. And flipping back around the other direction, something I want to point out here. Even with the slide closed, they made it still look and feel pretty open. We'll talk more about this, but just the way that they designed this bathroom, it opens up this entry area, something fierce, which I actually, I kind of, it's, it's growing on me. And then when you open it up between, you know, the, the opposing big panoramic picture windows, the super slide, the uh, six foot nine ceiling in here, it opens up very nicely. And that is one of the things uh, I, I really like about these, um, I would say almost conventional rear kitchens. Again, this one is kind of a twist on that concept, but it feels a little bit more like an opposing slide while still only actually requiring one slide. It keeps the weight and the cost very much in check. Now the big dinette here could fold on into a large adult size sleeper if need be. You see how there's the uh, storage accessible there via those doors below the benches. If we start by opening that up and look around, you can see this kitchen gives us some great storage capacity. And that's one of the things rear kitchens, I think, always do best within their respective classes. They give us typically more countertop space and more storage space than most anything else this size would be able to offer. Now over here, that is one of those 10.7 uh, cubic foot DC compressor fridges. It's cool to see those starting to finally uh, trickle into the used RV market. For the most part, used RVs just well, the, the 12 volt fridges haven't been used long enough to really be in the used market. The countertops are all sealed edge pressed membrane. And part of the reason that you're seeing that is not a lot of people realize that Shasta is actually um, a uh, smaller division within the Coachman group of RV uh, production. So that's why you're getting some things there. If, if, I, if it were me and I was designing this, I tell you the one thing I would have done a little bit different is I would have extended this countertop out to about here and give myself like a half horseshoe, but I didn't design it. It's already built. It's not going to change. That's just something that I observed that personally I think I, I would have done differently, but I, hey, you know what? Maybe one of these days if I ever end up building my own RVs, I'll get to see how simple and easy it is. It's easy to, you know, play hindsight quarterback. <laughs> Giant campsite picture window. Big chairs right there, and they're totally free-floating. So if you do choose to actually kind of install some entertainment in here, because it's kind of just entertainment ready. I don't see where there's ever been a TV in it. You uh, you could turn the TV toward the chairs, like on a swing arm mount. You can turn the chairs toward the TV. You could do a little bit of whatever you wanted over here. Now, that's a jackknife storage sofa. There basically is a storage chest below it. Well, you see that kind of simulated cinema seat with the uh, fold-down armrest. And it boggles my mind. All the windows in here, why is there not a window on that wall? Again, I didn't design the thing. I don't I don't even know why I feel the need to worry about that. I think I called this a six foot nine ceiling. I'm sorry. This is not, by the way, this is a six and a half foot conventional ceiling height. Let me um flip the camera around here for you just to give you a little bit of a reference point. So I'm six three-ish or whatever walking around here. And, you know, I can get right under this air conditioner. I can stand on my toes and still not touch it, ET phone home style. It's fine for walking around. It does mean that in the shower, my head, as tall as I am, I would need to be, I would say in the skylight, but in this case, they actually put the power vent fan directly above the uh, shower pan. We'll see that in just a second here. Actually, uh, let me back up a little bit. One of the things I want to show you here is, I'm tripping on everything behind me, all these chairs. They did something a little bit different here to make it give a nice open feel. I've never seen this exactly done. I don't dislike it. It just struck me as, huh, that's different. The linen cabinet here, they took it outside of the bathroom and it allowed them to push the bathroom wall back like a foot. It is big and wide open right here. I kind of like it, especially when the slide's closed. We'll see that, uh, well, we already saw that, we, uh, you know, never mind. <laughs> I usually do that after I'm done with my interior portion. Now it does mean, 
The actual bathroom area is a little smaller, a little simpler, but I think it does enough of what it needs to where it needs to. And again, at my height, my head, if I stand straight up, will need to be inside of there, but I can do it. And it's a nice, easy step-in shower, not a travel trailer tub. Also not too awful bad, decent leg room. Privacy door for the master bed. And this little stuff, switches on the walls, like uh, switches for the bedroom ceiling, switches right there for the hallway. And then you have a separate switch for like all of your main living room cabin space. But again, this is a simple series trailer. We have just a shelf above the bed. We have no USB plugs in here, just simple, common metallic mini blinds, but they're effective. There's nothing in this RV that doesn't work. It could be argued there's fancier things that could have been done like a true queen bed instead of a camp queen, but this is a per perfectly functional camper. And I think I said no USB plugs. I meant just on the other side of the camper because there's obviously some right there. And it's, it's kind of funny. Um, it looks like a small awning, but it's really not. It's just a very wide open, broad side. Well, we've already got people checking it out inside. That didn't take long. <laughs> wide open front pass through up here with some very large doors on both sides. This is something very similar to a lot of uh, like what J-Flight does. You see how that storage also wraps around under the bed there. Now, again, this is that um, simplicity, bare necessities series of trailer out there. It does what it needs to. It doesn't do anything more than it has to. Nice more ride steps, nice power awning, nice power tongue jack. It's got all those bare necessities handled very nicely. Walkable roof. It's not an enclosed underbelly. It's not heated. It's not made for extreme seasons, brother. It's just made for some camping, man. And it is interesting to me. You see that you have the one breeze window on the slide side here, but not on the forward side of the slide out. I don't fully understand that design decision, but I don't have to since I'm not the one you know, that designs these things. <laughs> now, as I mentioned, it, uh, it does have a walkable roof. You might notice how it does not include a ladder, but the roof is walkable on these. You just simply need a ladder, uh, for, you know, free floating ladder for your regular upkeep. And the aluminum wheels here, it does give it just a nice little spark of eye candy that I think this one really benefits from. I could, this is definitely within the weight of a lot of half tons. It's the right floor plan if you wanna leave it parked somewhere, but it's still light enough if you wanna haul it around potentially with an appropriately equipped half ton or better. I could see this one working. I could see this working for a number of very different people, interestingly. So if that looks right for you, give us a call. If you have other questions, let us know. If you need financing, you need hitching, any of that stuff, we do all that stuff, ladies and gentlemen. We're here when you're ready. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo Camping, everyone.